It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Please be seated. So what is your behag? Anybody know what a behag is? Hint, it's an acronym. Not a soul knows what a behag is. Okay, B-H-A-G. It stands for Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. Okay? That is a behag. Now, a behag has a few defining characteristics. It is a goal, a vision, a dream that is absolutely, positively beyond your scope and above your station. It's too big for somebody like you to think that you could ever have any hope of achieving it. If it's something where the pathway forward seems obvious and it seems highly likely that everything is going to fall into place to make it happen, it's not a BHAG. It's smaller than a BHAG. But the world as we know it, all of the wonders and the miracles that have turned this fragmented and fallen world into something that is habitable and that still holds on to hope, wouldn't be here if it weren't for BHAGs. Now this weekend, our nation celebrates Dr. Martin Luther King. There's no question this was a man who had a BHAG. And it's kind of unfortunate. History has a tendency to have us look backwards through a lens where what we see is what happened at the end, and we often forget the beginning. So we remember the Martin Luther King who stood on the Washington Mall addressing millions, and people hung on his every word and absolutely loved the I Have a Dream speech, and the movement was going 90 miles an hour. But it was not always so. We forget that in the early days, he made many failed attempts to ignite the movement. Time and time again, he tried to organize sit-ins, he tried to organize marches, he tried to organize rallies. People did come out, but the moment there was any serious threat of violent pushback, they went right back to their homes and said, uh-uh, too much. And of course, his detractors looked at him and said, you're going to dismantle the racist institutions of America, and especially the American South? Yeah, good luck with that. And it was when he finally went out on a limb, and he went from home to home and said, I know this is a big and dangerous ask, and it goes against every parental instinct in your body, but I would like to borrow your children. And we're going to go out on a march with youth and children. And when that happened, and when there was the inevitable violent pushback, that is when the community finally said, enough. We are behind you because we are not going to allow this kind of behavior and this kind of institution to continue. And that's where his big, hairy, audacious goal, a goal that was way above his station, way too big to accomplish, actually began to take wings. Now, I'm not remotely saying that BHAG has been fully accomplished, we're done, let's move on. So much of it remains as work for us today. But thanks to that humble beginning, the spark is still there, the hope is still alive, the vision still exists. Well, the ultimate behag, of course, belonged not to Martin Luther King, but to Jesus. Again, history plays tricks on us here. We're sitting here 2,000 years later in a building and part of a religious institution that has been built up around his name, that has been worshiping him for centuries, that can't imagine anything but the great cosmic Christ that we read of in Scripture, that we practice through our creeds and our traditions.
Christians to whom we pray. But it was not always so. Take an imaginative journey back to the actual place in history, the actual geographic place where today's story from the Gospel of John actually happened. He's just kind of walking along a dusty street somewhere. This is an itinerant rabbi from Galilee, of all places, Galilee being the backwater of the ancient Near East, who's having the audacity to talk a big game. And John the Baptist, who likewise we think of as a huge figure, but at that time was an insignificant nobody except to a small group of disciples, is saying, look, here is the Lamb of God. Here is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah wrote centuries earlier that it's too light a thing that you're simply going to restore the tribes of Jacob and the survivors of Israel. You are going to be a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The entirety of humanity, the entirety of creation is going to be restored and made new you. Talk about a behag. And in that moment, a behag placed on the shoulders of somebody who by all appearances was way too small, way too weak, way too insignificant to carry it. And yet, a scant three or four years later from this narrative, Jesus has gone to Jerusalem. He's been crucified and died. He is resurrected and ascended. He has sent the gift of the Holy Spirit upon his disciples. And a movement that would indeed turn the world upside down and reach to the ends of the earth has started. Once again, it's not a behag that has been fully accomplished. Christ's work of salvation, folks, all you've got to do is look out the window, or in many cases, even look inside the window and realize there is work yet to be done. But the spark is alive. The vision hasn't gone anywhere. In spite of a history that is designed to chew up, spit out, and forget a figure like Jesus of Nazareth, yet another pretender to greatness and power with a failed mission, in spite of it, it's still alive. Because he is claims to be, and his behag will not die, and will not ultimately be defeated. So what I'm going to invite us now into is just a moment, and it'll only take maybe two, three minutes of reflective silence, but I'm going to ask you, in light of these beautiful stories of Jesus our Savior, of Martin Luther King, who was inspired by him and followed in his footsteps, what is your behag? What is that dream, that vision, that goal, where if you can get all of the limiting voices out of your head, all of the senses of, it will never work, I'll get too tired, I'm too small, I'm too weak, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too whatever, if you can get all those voices out of your head, what is your behag? What is your giant global dream? And at the end, those of you who feel moved to share it, absolutely may, no one must, but let's take just a moment to